Yeah, well, something that um, guys like us take for granted because we were in entertainment, we've dealt with rejection our whole lives totally. since we've been in that because every day you're in that business, it's rejection. Yeah. And um, I just uploaded a, a video on my YouTube today called uh, When's the Last Time You Were Rejected? And if people want to go see that, just, just saw that it's a great show at YouTube. Yeah. And like, I realized, so one of the problems that has developed over our lifetime that you and I are lucky enough to remember what the world was like pre uh, September 11th, mm -hmm. 2001, you know what I mean? Like everything changed after that. And with the advent of the internet, social behavior changed and everything has changed quicker than our bio, like our biological vessel yeah. is prepared to deal. Like we have like a default programming that is not ready for the way everything has changed. Yeah. And, um, a lot of people are soft and, and I'm not trying to insult them, but it just, it just is, man. Everybody is so like sensitive to like, like, uh, they, they can't handle rejection. And that's a big problem. And it, part of it is because masculinity has been all but destroyed because now people don't have to be direct with each other. They, they you don't, if like in, before the internet, if you had a problem with something, you actually had to like tell somebody. Yep. You had to like fucking make a scene. Totally. And it was normal. Like you could complain and somebody would be like, oh yeah, fuck. I got, you know, and like, it was like, you could like disagree respectfully. You could have arguments respectfully. Like you could argue about something, but then you would be like friends after still. Yeah. Like now it's like every little thing that doesn't go my way is an enemy and tried to hurt me. You're right. <laughs> Owen says, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so and, true. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. so good. I so, mean. What's so funny is, as you said, just real quick, and being in the industry, like learning at a very young age, like you're probably not going to get in a lot of stuff and you're going to spend a long time trying to get there. And most people, I remember going through the process when you're starting off in the business and a lot of people be like, oh, I'm going to make it. And I just remember hearing these people in the business over and over again, giving you the truth that seemed very gloom because it is, but you realize people couldn't grasp what was being said to them. They'd be like, you're probably going to not get a job for years. Like you're just gonna be trying and trying and nothing's gonna happen. You're going to be rejected. And like I'd say, this isn't fair. I'm like, dude, it's, of course it's not fair. It's not supposed to be. Fair. Life ain't fair. Life ain't <laughs> yeah. equal. There's right. nothing about yeah. this fucking experience that's yeah. fair. Yeah, I, dude. I remember I went in an in, <laughs> audition for not that it matters, but like just talk about rejection. I went in for Blue Bloods a while back, and like it was like, okay, I played the dead. I was gonna be the kid, like high school kid who died. And like did drugs and stuff and i got and like basically got the part i was like went in audition they called me back 20 minutes later said hey just come back we want to talk to you i said like, great and like we really like you we want to do this great i was like oh this is awesome and i was like are we going to read they're like no we want you to meet the director like the person and all this stuff so they're cool awesome that's this is fantastic i was really excited and then like the next day or two i didn't hear from them when i was supposed to get the email and they never reached out again and i found out through my agent at the time that someone's nephew or someone that was related got the part they got they just didn't tell me and i was like and just it was one of those things that i remember back then being like isn't that something and just made me laugh because i was like there's nothing i could like you could be like oh my god i didn't say my part right i did my land like no i literally was told like you got it and then they just didn't get, it's like you did nothing wrong like there's certain things you're just that's out of your control it's just somebody else making a decision they either like you or they don't or they liked you, but they like someone else, but it doesn't fucking matter. It's just life, right? I'm smiling right now because like everything you're saying is like in a nutshell, dating as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's the totally. thing is like, that is the message. So you don't need to like wonder about who got the part or what happened. No, you didn't get the part. Yeah, it didn't. Because they weren't jumping through hoops to get you. That's what, that's what matters. And that's, that's the difference between right. and people can't identify genuine desire. So yeah. a lot of times like people will put themselves in situations and they're like, I thought this person was into me, but they're not really responding like they yeah. are. And it's like, that's because they have other options and you're a fucking orbiter. You're right. One of many plates that that person is spinning. Right. And women do this naturally. From like the time they're 12, they're getting attention by all kinds of guys, right? And throughout their life, they always have guys trying to interact with them and be with them. So it's like uh, akin to the guy at the carnival spinning plates. Mm -hmm. And so, one plate falls and breaks, put another on there. And that's basically how relationships work. And it's not just dating. And this is the problem is like, people don't have game. And when they think of game, they think of like, 
clever things to say to like bypass women's like defense mechanisms so you can get them in the bed. And that's not what game is. Game is in every aspect of your life, not just dating. It's in professional. It's in um, just regular relationships. Just every interaction is is going to be predicated how successful it is and getting the outcomes you want. How good your game is. How direct are you? But also at the same time, how can you communicate with subtext? To also, you know, like the power of suggestion, if you will. All these things add up. And um, one of the if if, if like what I do in Get Mad or Get Realistic is kind of harp on the point of if you could really just sum up game, it's being as realistic as you can possibly be, not with other people, but with yourself and assess everything that is around you and what's really going on underneath everything. Not just accepting what people say, because what people say to you is always sub, there's subtext behind it. Yeah. They, we have uh, pleasantries, politeness, we have manners, all these things. And that's what people like you and me are good at is because at our job is literally to figure out what the subtext was underneath yeah. words that a, a writer wrote. And the way we do that and figure out the, the, the things that have the most stakes, the most urgency, and put right. the most emotion behind it, that's going to make an interesting, intense moment, which creates drama, which makes entertainment good. And without that, it's just a boring slice of life that nobody gives a shit about, right? Nobody wants to watch you drink a cup of coffee in a scene just because you're good looking. There's got to be a reason why you're drinking that cup of coffee and, you know, what's behind it. Uh, is, is there poison in it? Is there fucking steroids in it? And you're about to fucking Captain America, everybody. I don't know. But there's got to be something interesting. And so one of the things that we struggle with in our society, especially without um, having like the experience of growing up without technology where you have to interact with people is learning these social skills and learning how to be realistic with everything and learning to not take things personally, right? right. Water off a duck's back. You can't take things personally. Now, I'm not saying you got to let people walk all over you and not totally. like uh, talk back to people, but you've got to be realistic. And one of the things, that's why it's get mad or get realistic is because the lack of game that people have, the lack of being realistic with themselves is, it's, we're in la la land right now. And it also ties into the tagline that Crow uses, belief is the enemy of knowing. And it's because if you believe something, you admit you don't know. And if you don't know, you can't act on, on that information and assess your environment, right? If you're just going off of beliefs, that's gonna lead you to emotionalism and that can get you in a lot of trouble. And you always see this when, more so with women than men, but it's always just like bickering about how they feel rather than our feelings are not important. What's important, the truth and reality or giving a shit what you think about it. And right. for me, it's truth and reality is more important than what the fuck I think about it. Oh, absolutely. I just try to give, you know, serve the best of my ability. So that's what uh, I'm, you know, in a way, get mad or get realistic ties into everything we do, but it's going to be more for like, like, average joes because i i realize they're like men all men are being left behind in this culture absolutely like, literally no yeah so i want to do something to build to maybe provide a solution for people because you know people see my transformation i look like a freaking uh like like 140 to 145 like a year ago two years ago because i was just not healthy i was working two jobs i didn't have time to do anything for me and i was writing spirit world so like you know like I, my days were like 12 to 14 hour days, maybe 15 hours on some days because traffic. And then I'd get home and I'd have a little bit to write, a little bit to sleep and do it all again. And I was getting burned out and I dropped, like I became emaciated. I looked like Christian Bale in The Machinist. Yeah. Because you know, I'm a little over six feet, a little over six feet being like 140, 145 is like dangerous. And then um, when I moved here, I don't want to say where I am on air, but yeah, I have no stress. Uh, environment's really clean food's really good a lot of local farms people are really nice there's none of that wuhan wiggle nonsense i haven't worn a mask or anything this whole time it's not existent here it's not even part of the culture and uh i had like like this energy returned to me like this like like spiritual essence kind of come back to life and then i, I made the decision I, I looked into a program that somebody recommended just to try it for 90 days and it I responded pretty well to it and I've now gained over 30, 30 like about 32 to I'm, I'm going for 35 but I'm almost there pounds and of muscle not fat or just not just eating like actual working out muscle 
I look really good without like my clothes on. So that helps your confidence with women. Women see it and it like it by it, that's one of those things that bypasses a lot of roadblocks people will get is if you're good looking and you're in shape, you go to the front of the line just about everything. Right. Absolutely. And that matters. And so my program in that that I did, I'm not saying it'll work for you, but I'm saying if you want to turn, if you a lot of people just don't know where to start. Like where, what should I do? It's like first go to the gym and use this and eat right. And that as soon as you start looking different, you feel different, you get confidence, people treat you differently. Like life changes just by being in shape. Totally. And there's a lot of people who they might not be that great looking, but if they get a great body, they surpass everybody else, you know? So it's just, it's just something to be mindful of. And I want to contribute that. 